Hems use high frequency, or HF, for worldwide communications. But propagation on these bands can be spotty. Ever wondered where the bands are open to? The International Beacon Network can help you find out. Let's see how it works. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG. HEMS use lots of abbreviations, and DX stands for distance. Over time, DX has come to refer to working stations outside one's own country. The HF bands, open to those with general and extra class licenses, can sometimes work over very long distances, even to the far side of the planet. But propagation conditions are highly variable and depend on many factors, including our own star, the Sun. Software has been developed and honed over decades that uses solar activity parameters to predict propagation, but even that isn't exact. It's nice to have a way to tell directly what the band openings are, and for the last 21 years, this has been addressed by the International Beacon Network. The Northern California DX Foundation is a very active nonprofit organization composed of DX operators and enthusiasts. They go so far as to fund expeditions to rare locations to put them on the air. These are called, suitably enough, de-expeditions. To address the problem of knowing when the bands are open and to where, the Northern California DX Foundation, along with the International Amateur Radio Union, created the International Beacon Network. Now 21 years old, the Beacon Network consists of 18 stations around the world. Each transmits at a precise time on a precise frequency, and does so on five different HF bands. If you listen on these frequencies, you may hear some of the beacons. If you can, you know the band is open to that area, and it might be a good time to call CQDX down in the CW portion of the band, or if the beacon is really strong, call CQDX on single sideband up in the phone portion of the band. Of course, we never transmit on the beacon frequency itself. Every 10 seconds, a beacon station transmits its call sign in CW on the beacon frequency at 100 watts using a vertical antenna. After that, it sends four long dashes. The first is done at 100 watts, the second at 10 watts, the third at 1 watt, and the fourth at 100 milliwatts. The beacons are active on five bands, 20 meters, 17 meters, 15, 12, and 10 meters. These bands were chosen because at the time of implementation, these bands were very active for very long distances. The network doesn't have beacons on 30 or 40 meters. Let's look at the frequencies. On 20 meters, the beacons broadcast in turn on 14.100 megahertz for 10 seconds. So if you listen there for three minutes, all 18 beacon stations will transmit. Let's do that using my little Fifi software-defined radio that allows us to see as well as hear. On the main dial, 14.100 megahertz is here. You can also see it with better band spread up here. Over here is the Northern California DX Foundation website, which states which beacon is transmitting on that frequency. Let's listen to the 4U1UN station at UN headquarters in New York. You can see the actual signal on the waterfall diagram here. Note that the four long dashes fade as the power goes down. We can just hear the beacons in Canada, California, and Hawaii. We can do the same thing on 18 megahertz. Let's listen. We hear the station in Canada fairly well, plus the California station.
Each beacon transmits first on 14.100 MHz, then 18.110 MHz, 21.150 MHz, 24.930 MHz, and 28.2 MHz. Then it goes silent until its turn comes around again. So, if you listen on one of these frequencies, you'll hear the beacons in succession. This is the classic beacon network and has been in place successfully for many years. You can tune around and listen at different times during the day to see when the band is open and to where. But this isn't the only beacon network out there. In the next Ask Dave video, we'll demonstrate the reverse beacon network. Stay tuned. This week's picture is a video I took from my motorcycle on a ride through Dolores Canyon on Colorado Highway 141. It's not as big as the Grand Canyon, but nonetheless is spectacular in its own way. I love this ride. A trip to Gateway and back is a nice day ride on my street bike. The road is uncrowded and you can enjoy the scenery as much as you want. If you liked this video, please share it with your friends. I urge you to subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos. I have a tip jar on my YouTube channel page and also on my website at ke0og.net and I gratefully acknowledge those who have supported my channel. The whole purpose of this series is to answer your questions about ham radio, especially those of interest to those new to the hobby. You can ask questions by commenting on any of my videos on YouTube, preferably on the one most directly related to your question, or you can pose a question directly at www.ke0og.net slash ask-dave. Until we next meet, 73.